When learning control systems, one often first assumes that the control system is an analog system. That is, all components of the control system are continuous time components. However, the majority of controllers are implemented in digital processes. We now start with the second part of the module, where we revisit classical control but with a digital controller. In this video, we look at the digital classical control configuration and we discuss our approach to digital control. In a previous module, you would have encountered the analog classical control system. The plant has input U and output Y. The plant output is subtracted from the reference input to form the error signal which is fed into the controller. The task of the controller is to calculate the plant input to produce the desired closed loop behavior. In this setup, all the signals are analog or continuous time signals, and both the plant and the controller are described with continuous time transfer functions. Let's now look at the digital classical control configuration. That is, when the controller is implemented in a digital processor. The plant, with its input and output, is unchanged. However, everything else exists in the discrete time domain. This means that signals are only defined at sampling instants. In a digital processor, the sampling period, and therefore the occurrence of the sampling instance, is typically determined by the combination of the processor clock and a timer. The continuous time plant output is sampled by an analog to digital converter producing a discrete time signal. This is subtracted from the discrete time reference signal and the result is fed into a digital controller. The discrete time output signal of the controller is converted to the continuous time domain using a digital to analog converter. Before we discuss this configuration further, let's first look at the conversion of signals between the continuous time and discrete time domains in more detail. It is useful to think of the analog to digital conversion as a two-step process. The first step is sampling which selects the values of the continuous time signal at the sampling instance. We denote the sampling period by capital T and the discrete time index by K. For the resulting digital signal, we drop the sampling period and write it only in terms of the discrete time index. The second step in the analog to digital process is quantization. Since a digital processor cannot represent arbitrary real numbers, but only a finite number of digital words, the digital signal values are approximated as the closest digital word that can be represented by the processor. For digital to analog conversion, digital processors use zero order hold circuits. The idea is simply to take the value of the discrete time signal at a certain sampling instant and keep it constant for the subsequent sampling period. The result is a continuous time signal, which means that the resulting signal is defined for all time. Let's now return to the digital control system configuration and look at the assumptions we make for this module. The first assumption is that the plant is linear time invariant with a single input and a single output. The second assumption is that the effect of quantization during analog to digital conversion is negligible and we will therefore represent the digital signals as real numbers. The last assumption is that sampling the calculations of the controller and digital to analog conversion takes place instantaneously and exactly at the sampling instant. In many practical systems, this assumption is reasonable, but in some cases the calculations of the controller take a significant portion of the sampling period to execute, and this assumption might have to be revisited. To conclude this video, let's look at the approach we take for the digital control part of this module. When we look at the digital control system configuration, 
we see that there is a discrete time part and a continuous time part that are interconnected. Such a hybrid system is very difficult to analyze and use properly. In this module, we will first develop techniques to model and analyze purely discrete time systems. We will then use this to design digital controllers in two different ways. The first approach is to approximately model the discrete time part as continuous time components and we then view the full system as a continuous time control system. This approach is called a digital controller design by emulation. The second approach is to find an equivalent discrete time description for the continuous time part and we then view the full system as a discrete time system. This approach is called direct digital design.